Hello everyone, my name is Lukman and I am the coordinator of Al Faisal Madhab under the umbrella of the International Office at Al Faisal University, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. I am honored to be your host for today. For those of you who don't know what Al Faisal Madhab is, it's an initiative under the umbrella of the, of the International Office, College of Medicine, that aims at creating an online global community of medical students. Al Faisal Madhab covers a broad range of topics that are common to medical students all around the world. Our primary objective here at Al Faisal Madhab is to help medical students learn more about the career opportunities available after graduating, as well as the steps involved in pursuing them. Since medical students are always confused about the path, that, uh, about the path that's ahead of them, Al Faisal Madhab's career guidance series addresses this challenge through the, through the perspective of accomplished and experienced seniors. As you all are aware, we are now conducting a continuation of the CGSKSA Saudi residency interviews. Interviews are one of the most important elements in, residency matching pro in the residency matching process. Hence, we aim to guide the applicants on how they can ace their interviews and increase their chances of matching at their desired programs and specialities. For today's talk, we have Dr. Samia Rathebi. Dr. Samia Rathebi is one of our distinctive College of Medicine alumni. He has recently graduated from the, pa from the Pediatrics Residency Program at King Faisal Specialist Hospital and Research Center. He was the former chief intern and chief resident at KFS Chassi. Um, finally, before we begin, we would like to mention that these talks are brought to you in partnership with Ambos. Uh, doctors, thank you so much for agreeing to give this talk. You can start when we are ready. Uh, before you do, I'd just like to uh, clarify when you'd be taking the questions, like uh, if you'd be taking the questions as they come or whether you'd be taking them after you're uh, done speaking. Um. As the time goes, you can go ahead and ask any questions. Interrupt me as you wish. Okay, thank you. We'll stop sharing so that uh, you can share. Sure. Hello? Uh, yes, Dr. We can hear you. Okay, perfect. Okay, so uh, yes, yeah, so just to give a little bit more uh, uh, perspective into uh, this talk. So um, I've myself been through a few interviews for the residency training program uh, as being uh, the chief intern as well as being a chief resident, been through at least three. So I have a good idea on what exactly uh, some of the re residency pr training programs um, like to ask, what they wanna see and what they wanna hear from uh, interns and residents alike. Um, so from this talk itself, uh, what you're going to gain is basically you're going to get an insight of what goes on in the interviews and what to expect. Uh, from that itself, you can gain your confidence, um, which will display and help you distinguish yourself from the other attendees. And as well, you won't be surprised or taken off guard by any questions you didn't prepare for. Um, so from that, the number one thing that you have to take into consideration whenever you're going into these uh, programs and going to different hospitals for these interviews is when exactly does the interview start? And the interview starts during actually your rotation. Well, months and months and months before you're actually, your actual interview date. Um, sometimes the month before, sometimes months before. And that's, uh, that falls upon the intern and um, some of the trainees. What exactly, what, what, which exact center you want? For example, if people are going for um, King Faisal Specialist Hospital or King Khalid University Hospital, you would want to inform the residency training program and some of the other consultants alike, along with the chief resident, that, hey, look, I'm interested in this program. Um, I want to be a resident here, and I would like to inform you. And the reason being is to give them a, an idea that, hey, look, pay attention to who I am because um, I would want to impress you. And at the same time, I want you to remember me when it comes down to the interview date itself. So you won't be, so you'll have a, a foot ahead of everybody else. Okay. So when it comes down to the interview date itself, what to expect or who to expect in there? Uh, usually when it comes down to um, um, the interview date itself, you have multiple interviews running at the same time. For example, in King Faisal Specialist Hospital and other hospitals alike, you'll have uh, three different uh, rooms in which uh, the uh, interviews run and you can go into so, Hannah, the residency training program a director is in one room. And if you don't uh, particularly meet her or him, 
it doesn't, it's not a, it's not a plus or a minus against you. Um, so you'll have three consultants and their fields are differ from uh, consultant to consultant. And uh, usually it takes somewhere between eight to 10 minutes. Um, if it's less, it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. If it's more, it could mean a good thing and it could work in your favor. If they're asking you more than uh, the usual questions. So uh, what, are, what are some of the do's and don'ts of the residency, tra residency training program? We'll go over that when it comes down to the question part. And uh, as well, what do they want to expect? So what they want to expect from uh, an intern or a trainee who wants to work in there or become a resident in their training program is uh, basically they would want to see during the interview confidence, honesty, competence, and trustworthiness. They don't want to see someone who's overconfident, someone who's not coming off as, as natural or straightforward. And that will display on how you answer your questions. And it usually shows. They have a, uh, <clears throat> a score sheet in which they grade you upon your punctuality, uh, how well dressed you are, your CV, as well as how well you answer your questions. Um, from your CV, um, they'll look at they'll look into um, your letters of recommendation, which hospitals they get it from, which consultants you get it from. Um, they also they'll also look into which hospitals did you work in? Did you work in particularly their hospital, other hospitals, and they will ask you upon that. Which university did you uh, study? And as well, the courses and research. Courses, for example, in pediatrics. Um, have you done your PALS? Have you done your NRP? Have you done your BLS? Um, this shows interest and, and commitment towards this um, a particular pathway. As well, for the timing itself, like we mentioned beforehand, it takes somewhere between 8 to 10 minutes per, uh, per person. If it takes longer, it's a good thing. But again, if it takes less, it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. So going into the questions itself, so what type of questions are you uh, likely to expect when it comes to uh, this uh, interview is uh, knowledge slash scenario based questions, <clears throat> as well as questions directed to towards yourself. Uh, who are you as a person? And as we mentioned before, are you competent, confident, uh, trustworthy, and how well of a resident you will be in their program? So to give some examples when it comes to the knowledge slash uh, scenario based questions, first of all, going back to uh, what type of consultants you'll be expecting in the uh, interview <clears throat> will dictate uh, the type of questions that they'll ask. Uh, for example, the endocrine, path, PICU, GI consultants will ask endocrine, GI, GI or PICU type of questions. <clears throat> And uh, scenario-based questions, they'll put you in a scenario where you are either with a consultant, with a senior resident, or with a uh, patient and see how you're going to react. So let's give some examples, starting off with a scenario-based question. They particularly like to ask this line of questioning. <clears throat> uh, for example, you're with a sen uh, senior resident and he or she yells at you or treats you or mistreats you in a certain way. Um, one, you're, uh, another one, you're with your consultant during rounds and you're a senior resident and the consultant gives you an order, which you're not particularly happy with, how will you react? And, <clears throat> and number three, you are um, on call as a junior resident and you have a sick patient and your senior's busy and uh, you have to react. What's your next step of, uh, next line of action? So <clears throat> again, from here, they're trying to see uh, your personality they're trying to see you as uh, how well or how competent you are when it comes to making decisions and quick decisions. So <clears throat> uh, how to answer these type of questions. Let's go back to and take one, one, let's take each one, one by one. So for when you're dealing with a, uh, uh, someone who's a senior resident or senior towards you <clears throat> and they mistreat you, their type of, their type of answers that they want to hear isn't, I'd react this way, I'd be upset, and so forth and so forth. What they want to hear is someone who's honest and straightforward. And if you answer in any other particular particular way, they will see that. So try and be as uh, honest, honest as possible. So again, just the answer itself uh, and the 
particular answers that they like to hear is uh, when your senior resident yells at you, how would you react? <clears throat> uh, the best type of answer would be to answer in the following way. Well, th and this type of behavior in the workplace isn't, isn't good. Um, it's not acceptable. However, to react in the same manner isn't proper. I would, uh, there's a chief resident in place and I would take it to the chief resident and we can settle it that way rather than speak to the person uh, directly who's in treating in this manner. Um, <clears throat> for the consultant who is uh, giving you an order that you're not particularly happy with or you believe is wrong, the best way how to answer that or the best way how to go about that is speak to your consultant, ask them, can you please explain it to me? I don't understand. And if you still don't understand it, speak to, speak to another consultant. I don't understand this. The consultant is trying to ask me to do this for this patient and I'm not particularly confident. How should I go about? That's the best line of answer. And at the same time, he's a consultant. He knows better than I do or she knows better than I do, maybe more up to date. And I would like to get more clarification. And uh, when your patient is uh, sick and your senior resident is busy, um, this is the, the, the best way how to answer this and what they always want to hear and particularly want to hear, more important, is <clears throat> a, an approach to a sick patient. So I will always do my ABCs uh, when it comes to a patient, make sure his airway, breathing, circulation is fine. And uh, from that, I would outline how emergent this is and uh, take each step further. If he needs, for example, oxygen, if he needs fluids and so forth, I would approach it that way. So always mention ABCs. You don't have to go into further detail. Stop it short. Keep Stop it and keep it short. So for the <clears throat> uh, knowledge-based questions, pray that you don't get it because it's usually a tough questions and the consultants themselves don't know the level of an intern or don't know how to gauge the level of an intern or di sorry, distinguish the level of an intern, resident, and fellow particular. So you can get tough questions. You can get very easy questions, depending on the consultant. I've seen consultants ask, um, uh, for example, PICU consultants, they've asked uh, PICU fellow type questions where I couldn't answer myself. Or I've seen them ask simple questions in which can be answered very straightforward. But <clears throat> don't ever feel like you're backed into a corner. Don't ever feel like the, the pressure's on you or stressed out when it comes to the knowledge-based question. If you don't know, simple say, I don't know this question. However, I will go home and I will look it up and I will answer it the next time I see you. That way you are showing them, hey, look, despite the fact that I'm, uh, my, my knowledge isn't the best, just like everybody else, because this is a residency training program, you're training me to become better. I will go back home and I will study it and I will learn it and I won't forget it. And that's what they want to hear. And that's what they want to see when it comes to uh, residents. And that's what they want to see when they come and they teach you uh, on the floor, on the rounds and wherever that, hey, look, despite the fact that I don't know it, I went home, I studied it, and now I know it. <clears throat> so you can apply that to almost any uh, knowledge-based questions in which you are uh, posed with and you don't know. However, if you do know it, answer it, answer it the best you can, and more points to you. <clears throat> So now going into uh, direct questions uh, to gauge your character <clears throat> would be the, the first question that they always ask and one of the tougher ones that they like to ask, which is basically introduce yourself or talk about yourself. Take two minutes and let us know who you are as a person. So from this, <clears throat> from this um, uh, question, take a step back. They, what they do in the training program or sorry, during the interviews, they have your CV in front of them and sometimes up on the uh, TV behind you. So they have somewhat of an idea of who you are. And at the same time, if some hospitals ask for a personal statement and so forth, they have a better idea of who you are. So, so when you come into this uh, type of question, what you want to do and don't do, first of all, what you don't want to do is you don't want to sound arrogant. You don't want to ramble on and take too long. And you don't want to be short. Again, you want to be as honest as possible and try and mention <clears throat> something that happened in your life recently, something that happened that, sh that shaped you or, or uh, makes you who you are and how it, how it strengthens you, how it, how it affects you on a daily basis. And at the same time, mention some hobbies, mention some 
uh, where you went to school, where you did your internship. And uh, from that, that will give a, a good perspective of who you are. Um, the following question that they'd like to ask is, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? Now, again, <clears throat> you don't want to sound too confident. You don't want to be cocky. And at the same time, you don't want to destroy your character in front of them. I've heard people mention, um, I have no weaknesses. I work, I'm, um, I'm a great resident. I'm perfect for this program and so forth and so forth. That usually doesn't go well. So you want to be humble. And at the same time, you don't want to be overconfident. So uh, the way... The way how I, I, I try and inform people how to uh, structure their answers are basically try and have them overlap and try and have them mesh. Um, for example, make your weakness a strength or make your strength a weakness. Um, how do you do that in particular? So let's go into the line of um, uh, answering in which I, I particularly like this. So um, I work well with other people. I'm... Uh, um, I'm I'm a quick learner. Or when I hit the ground, I hit the ground and I, I start running. Um, at the same time, I'm a very hard worker. However, despite the fact that I'm a very hard worker, how, what are some of my weaknesses is that that plays into my weakness in the sense of I don't have a social life. I uh, don't go out as much. I'm more uh, focused on my job. I'm more focused on my studies. And that shows in my weakness, for example. That way, that way you didn't give too much about, about your weakness. You if you have any, if you don't have any. And at the same time, you are not destroying your character in front of them. You're not giving too much, you're not giving too little. You're being humble, you're being uh, straightforward. Um, <clears throat> next is, um, what interests you about pediatrics and why did you choose pediatrics in particular? The common answer to stay away from is I love children because as of that, you just set yourself up for um, the next question is, well, if you like pediatrics uh, for the sake of that you love kids, how can you go into pediatrics knowing that you're going to be dealing with terminally ill patients, uh, DNR patients? How are you going to handle that and how are you going to go back home and cope with that? So you want to stay away from that answer. <clears throat> um, so from this, you want to look down, look deep, because I don't want to give you an answer and try and direct you towards something that you may regret down the line. Look down, look deep inside yourself, and you would be able to answer it. Why exactly pediatrics? What makes me choose pediatrics? What makes you choose internal medicine? Or whatever the uh, different pathways is that you like to go. Uh, for me, myself, why I chose pediatrics <clears throat> versus um, the counterpart, which is internal medicine, is that multiple reasons. So one, pediatrics, you deal not only with the child, you deal with the, the family. So you treat the family, you treat the family as a whole because uh, your child, as a, as, a, as a parent, your child's being affected affects the whole family. Um, it's as if you're sick yourself. Uh, one. Two, when it comes to treating pediatrics, you have the opportunity to uh, prolong their life, intervene and prolong their life for many, 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 many decades to come. And that's satisfaction on its own and so forth. And then you could outline some of the similarities between internal medicine and pediatrics and go forth with it, which is the knowledge that, ha that pediatrics has th that you need to require to be a pediatrician is very vast. And to tackle that is, is, is accomplishment on its own and so forth. However, that's, my, that's how I would answer it. That's how I've answered it beforehand. However, my advice would be to look inside yourself and see why exactly you're going into pediatrics and don't answer it in the sense of I love kids, because that's a trap of its own. <clears throat> so um, the next question that they like to ask, um, or the common question that they like to ask, and which you need to prepare for when it comes to each hospital is, why are you choosing our hospital? And what do you know about our program? So <clears throat> the type of questions that you have to ask yourself when it comes to choosing each, each hospital is, is this hospital a primary, secondary, or tertiary care hospital? And what type of patients I'm going to see? So when it comes to uh, King Faisal Specialist Hospital, it's a secondary and tertiary, mainly secondary and mainly tertiary care hospital. You do see some primary cases. However, the majority is uh, tertiary and secondary. So <clears throat> that separates it from the other hospitals in the sense of I'll be seeing tough cases. I'll be seeing complicated cases 
versus hospitals like National Guard and uh, K- uh, KKUH and KFMC, Prince Sultan, Prince Sultan Military Hospital, where they see primary and secondary and the National Guard more and a little bit tertiary for when it comes to uh, um, uh, National Guard. Patient load and the training program itself and <clears throat> fellowship training program. See, these are the type of questions that you need to ask yourself and look into just a little bit. And you do that by gauging with some of the residents. Okay, what is this? Uh, uh, how many on calls you get? What is this tra- tra- residency training program like? What is the environment? How are the consultants? What is my future here if I'm to participate here? What's my learning? How many patients do I see? And so forth. From that and the way how you uh, show that and show that line of uh, that line of thought and that line of questioning, that internal. Um, internal dialogue dialogue that you have with yourself that would as well show shed some light on hey look I actually look into your program and I'm taking consideration into it deeply deeply <clears throat> and the following question when it comes to that is who do you know in our program um, sometimes they ask this question sometimes they don't this this can be tricky in the sense of there are always some uh, good apples there are always some bad apples when it comes to residents so that that's what they want to know which resident do you know? Which resident uh, do you associate yourself with? Do you want to be like, and so forth? So that takes of that takes. How, <clears throat> how can you answer that question? It takes uh, you to your training program or internship, and in the sense of, I went to this hospital. I know this resident. I work with this resident. I work with that resident. If the resident is good, that's a plus. If the resident, unfortunately, is not a good resident, someone who slacks off and so forth, they will associate you with that resident and associate your future with that resident. So try and be very careful when it comes to that. You can never go wrong with saying, I know the chief resident because you've spoken to the chief resident. um, You showed him that you're interested or her that you're interested. And you can move forward based off that. Unless you know that this resident is an outstanding resident, you would like to associate yourself with him or her or with the chief resident. Excuse me. As well, if you want to mention a few consultants that you've worked with in the past, and as well, how does this help? Is that the residency training program direct the director will go back to these residents, uh, possibly go back to the consultants, and ask them particularly of your name. Um, Who is this resident? Who's this intern? Um, Did you work with them? How are they? Is it is this resident? Is this intern a possible resident candidate? What's his strengths? What's his weaknesses? Him or her? And anything further to ask about them. So uh, one question, which is uh, sometimes asked, sometimes not asked, however, you would want to unfortunately prepare yourself for, um, which I particularly don't like, is uh, dependent upon if you're a male or female. So for uh, females, uh, they like to ask yourself, how many children are you planning to have? Um, Are you looking to drop the residency program if you were to have multiple children? Um, <clears throat> what they want to hear is a commitment, basically. Um, how many kids? I don't think, and I don't, th- I don't believe it should be asked. Um, I don't think it should be anybody's particular business. Um, however, what they want to hear is commitment. Um, as well for males, um, are you married? Are you looking to get married? What happens if your wife tells you, um, please quit resident, quit medicine? How would you react? Again, what they're trying to gauge from you is. Um, are you committed to uh, medicine? Are you committed to our training program? Mention it, be straightforward. I'm committed to the tra- residency training program, no matter what. I'm looking forward to start my first day and I'm looking to continue and finish the program as strong as I can. Um, I don't think the answer should be d- dug deep. And at the same time, this is not asked in every interview. However, this is a question that I, would, that I wanna bring up to the fact of don't be shocked when you hear this. Um, <clears throat> Another question that's common is how, um, how, when, it, okay, so to, to, to be straightforward, your chief resident gives you 10 questions, 10 on calls. How would you react? Um, the best answer would be to gauge the, gauge the uh, chief resident, ask them why exactly am I getting this uh, 10 on calls compared to the everybody else and speak about fairness and try and compensate the next month or following month. And <clears throat> as well, one question that they like to ask, um, which is a plus, a plus for you if you hear this question, where do you rank ourselves? Or where do you rank our hospital when it comes to your choice and your submission to the Saudi Commission? Um, 
when you hear that, you know that they're interested in you and uh, they want you as a resident. Um, so if you're, mashallah, a great intern and an outstanding one and impress in every single interview, hopefully, inshallah, all of you will be. And every hospital asks you um, this question, the best way on how to go about it, again, is, is being as truthful as possible and not to lie to them as they do see through it, um, is basically to, <clears throat> to mention, I will go back and I will, I'll go back home and I will um, uh, choose upon myself based on how this interview went and how the interviews go with other hospitals. Uh, that's if you don't know your answer and if you don't know which hospital you want to go to. However, if you do know your hospital that you want to go to and you want to be and you're fully confident that you want them and they want you, I've heard um, some people mention, "Hey, look, if you, I want you guys. I'll put you guys number one." Their their next question they would ask is, "How can we guarantee that?" I've heard, mashallah, some people with a full confidence mention, if you, don't want to go, if you don't want me to go to any other interview, I'll be more than happy not to go to. And uh, you can ask the other train, residency training program directors if I attended or not. That will show my commitment to you. And at the same time, I will get the commitment from you that um, we can go hand in hand in this uh, uh, process. And uh, their last question that they like to ask is, do you have any questions for us? <clears throat> You can simply say no and end it there. However, to show some um, interest and show some commitment, um, some people, what they like to ask, or sorry, they like to hear and residents, interns they've asked, is what makes your best, uh, what makes your best resident stand out? Or what makes your best resident their best resident? What are some of the qualities uh, do you believe I should have to be a uh, KFSH resident, for example? And uh, is there anything about this interview, about myself that you're unsure of that I could clarify? and uh, move about uh, that way. So um, generally, these are nine questions uh, when it comes to, uh, to gauge your character. Um, and at the same time, scenario-based and knowledge-based questions that they like to ask. This is th some of the most common questions that they like to ask. They don't particularly ask this amount of number of questions because it, takes, it can take up to 20 minutes. They ask generally half of it, maybe four to five questions. Uh, including a knowledge slash scenario base, you will always see it. And uh, from that, again, to uh, give my perspective, always be truthful as possible. Always be honest. They will see through it otherwise. And um, do your best. Know what to expect. And hopefully from this, you gain uh, some confidence when it comes to uh, answering your questions, when it comes to knowledge-based, scenario-based, and uh, character-based questions. Um, so from that, does uh, anybody have any questions? Does anybody have anything they'd like me to clarify or anything of the sort? I think no questions so far, doctor. Okay, great. Is there anything more I should um, speak upon or I should clarify from your guys' side? Um, we can wait for questions. So if uh, if anyone of the attendees has any questions, make sure to add them in the chat box below. Uh, we got one question, doctor. Um, someone is asking, what uh, good examples of questions that you would ask at the end? I think they mean... Um, Towards the end, what questions would you ask the interviewers? Like examples of good questions. Yeah, okay, so some questions that are uh, good questions that I, that I have heard and that people, uh, the training programs and some of the consultants are impressed by is, um, okay, so what makes your best resident their best resident? Uh, this gives them an idea of what your aim is. I'm looking to be the best. My goal is to be the best resident in this uh, training program. And at the same time, <clears throat> when it comes to um, your CV and how the interview goes, the type of question that they like to hear or what's a good question that like to be mentioned is, what are you unsure of based on my CV or based on my uh, uh, this interview that I can clarify? What are you unsure of? And uh, those, I think, are particularly two very good questions at the very end that you can ask the interviewers. 
All right, sounds good. And uh, we have more questions in the chat. Uh, so Mohammed is asking, uh, can I answer in Arabic? Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely you can answer in Arabic, um, but try and keep it as uh, English as possible because you would have to understand that um, now where the hospitals are gearing towards is given the fact that um, the hospital is multinational, um, for example, some of the nurses, some of the consultants, they are, uh, their nationalities are non-Arab speaking nationalities, for example, Philippines, uh, India, Pakistan, or wherever it is, they, wanna, they want, mainly want to hear you speak English. And in the hospital itself, you, when it comes to discussing a patient or during the rounds, you have to speak in English. So yes, you can speak in Arabic, but try and keep it um, th the fact that I do know English, I speak English, I speak it fluent, and I speak it well. Uh, doctor, what about the, um, the programs that have interviews in Arabic? Um, from to to be honest, I haven't heard of any interviews that went in Arabic. However, if it's if the consultant chooses to ask you in Arabic, go forth go forth with it in Arabic. It's it's not a problem at all. All right. And uh, Maha is asking, uh, what do you think is the best approach regarding answering the "tell us about yourself" question? Yeah, yeah, I I particularly hate this question. Okay, because it can be a bit tricky. Again, if you are to answer this type of question, you have to keep in mind that I don't want to ramble on for too long. I don't want to keep it short. So um, introduce yourself in the sense of uh, the basic way of I'm. Um, my name is uh, blah, blah, blah. I was born and raised here and here and here. I grew up here. This is my university. This is where I did my internship. And I think the most important is um, taking what situation in your life, either recently or beforehand, that affected you and shaped you in the better way. This gives them a very, very good detail of who you are in particular. I think this is the best way on how to answer. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, another question, uh, what questions do they usually ask us about research pro projects research that the applicant participated in? Okay, okay, perfect, thank you. Um, so when it comes to research, the type of questions that they'll ask, so uh, I, I believe now, I mean, it's changed from my time, but I believe now in the Saudi Commission, when it comes to asking questions, uh, uh, comes to uh, submitting your CV, they ask you to at least take part in a research, taking part in a research or publish the research publication. So when it comes to the interview itself and your CV, as they read it beforehand, you coming into the interview and at the same time having it up in front of you, know everything about your research. They won't ask you anything outside of that realm. So for example, <clears throat> you publish a publication a year before the uh, interview itself, know that, inter know that research. S Understand it because they'll ask you, okay, how well did you take part in this research? Um, what, were you, what was your role? What did you do? Okay, what was the uh, uh, outcome of the research? Um, what other consultants did you take part in, uh, 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 did the research with? So it's mainly about your research and what did you do in it and what are the outcomes and so forth. So don't study anything else except your research and your CV. Focus on Anything mentioned in your research, you know it, and you know how to answer. Specifically, uh, research, because if you happen to fall into a consultant that is, mashallah, very good in research, he'll ask you about it and test you, test you on your own research. All right, so next question is, uh, what would be the best way to address the question, why didn't you rotate with us? Oh, yes. Okay, so... For me myself, I've been asked that question many times before. I've, I've, um, uh, some of the some of the residents, mashallah, in KFSH now and in the past, had the same question. And if they are residents in KFSH, despite the fact not rotating in KFSH, their type of their type of answers, I think the best type of way how to answer this, and I've heard the best answers is simply, we only have two months to in pediatrics. Um, some hospitals or some universities. They allow you to choose it. Some universities, they don't allow you to choose it. So you can go direct yourself. If you're not allowed to choose it, you're not allowed to choose it. However, if you are al allowed to choose it, I tried getting my um, uh, pediatric uh, internship in your hospital to rotate in your hospital. But unfortunately, you guys were, uh, if you guys tried at least, 
I tried, you guys were full capacity and I wasn't able to, or I tried with my university, my university didn't allow it to happen. So un that was the unfortunate thing. However, I'm do I am interested based off the, f the previous question that they've possibly asked, what do you know about our program? Who do you know in our, our residency, tra residency training program? That will show that, hey, look, despite the fact that I didn't rotate, despite the fact that I didn't get the opportunity, I still know about your, res uh, your residency training program. So that plays... That, that will play a role. So you can answer it uh, or show interest from a different question. And at the same time, if they haven't asked you that question, you can mention that. Yes, despite the fact that I didn't rotate, I know about your training program. I know it about the reasons are kidda, kidda, kidda. I've seen uh, where your guys' aim. I've seen some of your residents. I know what to expect. Uh, Doctor, the next question is, uh, do they ask about our plans after residency? And a good answer be if we are not sure. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Um, do they ask about our plans after residency or yeah. uh, uh, what uh, a good answer be if you're not sure? Yeah, this is the, yeah. <laughs> wonderful question. Uh, yes, they do ask that sometimes. Um, so for example, <clears throat> what they're trying to get from you is, are you going to do your fellowship here in our, in our uh, uh, hospital? Or are you going to try and plan to go abroad? Um, so if you're not sure, which is probably 99% of the people are not sure mention, I'm not too sure. I will find out during residency training program. When I rotate through the different, uh, specialities, I have, I have a little interest here and there, but I'm not sure. And again, I will see when I go through my residency training program, which is, will give me a better idea of what the speciality is in comparison to when I was an intern. And I think that's the best answer to answer that which I've seen before in the past and heard consultants appreciate that answer. Uh, our next question is, uh, do they ask about our extracurricular uh, involved? Well, no, they don't. Um, however, they may ask if you have any hobbies in the introduce yourself question. Um, if they do, just mention your hobbies and go forth with it. Um, make some hobbies and... Uh, uh, answer it that way, answer it that way, and um, it shouldn't go wrong. Okay, okay. Um, our next question is, uh, if you have any basics to recommend to devise before the interview, such as uh, a vaccine table, etc. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? You uh, kind of broke up on that. Uh, yeah. Um, any basics uh, you would recommend to revise before the interview, such as uh, the vaccine table, etc. Any knowledge, ba any uh, books or something to recommend? I'm sorry. Uh, any basics you would recommend uh, that uh, you know someone would revise before the interview? No, no. Again, uh, I, I, it's it's very difficult to uh, recommend because again, it's it's dependent upon what type of consultant you'll get in your interview will dictate your questions that will be posed to you, your knowledge-based questions at least. And it doesn't mean that you will get a knowledge-based question. Hope that you'll get a scenario-based question and that'll be the easiest. But if you do get a knowledge-based question, I don't think that there's a way to prepare for it or study for it. Um, usually, I would say um, know how to approach an emergency type of patient or an emergency type of situation, which is basically know your pals, ABC. I would approach the patient airway, breathing, circulation, and I'll go forth with it that way and keep it short, keep it, um, keep it as short as possible. And again, if you don't know the answer, don't, I don't know the answer. I'm sorry. I'm not that smart or whatever it may be. I don't know the answer. However, I'm going to ba go back home and look up the answer. And from that, I will never forget this answer and forget your question because you have to understand something and the, the consultants understand this. You're going into a residency training program in which they are training you to become a doctor. They're going to give you as much knowledge as possible, and they're going to give you as much clinical experience as possible. So you are a blank sheet to them, and they know you're a blank sheet. They're just gauging you as, okay, how, how well do you know this topic or whatever? But at the same time, they're expecting for you not to know the answer. So it's almost a win-win situation. Uh, all right, uh, doctor, there's one more question. Yeah. Uh, how to control our nervousness 
and look more comfortable during the interview. Okay, so uh, it goes back to, um, okay, so how to control your nervousness. You, you could approach this in many different ways, and people approach this in many different ways. If you're nervous, uh, for me, how I see it is if, if you're nervous, that's a good thing. Manati, you don't want to mess up. Manati, you'll be more sharp. You'll be more keen on answer and be as straightforward as possible. Your heart may be racing a, a bit, but again, you would look to answer as clearly as possible. That's one way how to deal with your nervousness. Uh, the second way on how to deal with your nervousness is hopefully <laughs> from this talk itself, uh, you getting an idea of what to expect during your uh, residency, uh, your interview, what type of questions you get, uh, you will get in your interview and formulate your answers beforehand and as well practice with your siblings, your brother, your sister, or your mother, your father, or however, maybe, or, or, or uh, get together with your friends and practice uh, your questions and your uh, answers. That way, in these two different aspects, the way how you look at nervousness, the way how you approach the interview when it comes to questions and formulate your answers beforehand. I think this is the best way. And again, don't panic. And okay, so and, and another way is if uh, you get a question that you're not prepared for, don't panic. Um, figure out a way how to answer it in the uh, most diplomatic way possible. For example, um, <clears throat> uh, they see that you have the USMLE. Are you going to look? Are you looking to apply to the states? As you see, the states is a better program than. Uh, uh, our training program here in, in Saudi. Do you believe? Do you believe you're going to be going abroad and traveling abroad if you would get accepted in 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 the states? Um, tough question. They put you into a corner again. Don't panic. Try and think as clearly as possible. I'm applying for this training program for a reason. I believe that it's a great program, and despite the fact that uh, the states is an end goal, either being fellowship or later on. Um, my intention is to train as a resident here in Saudi, and I'm showing my commitment by coming to each and every inter each and every interview. So, if I was to get it accepted into the states, I don't think it's a particularly good time now. I don't think I would be applying now. That's how I would answer the question because that's how I would um, that's how I see myself, or at least I saw myself when I went through uh, uh, the interviews. Um, <clears throat> and at the same time, yeah, I mean, don't panic. Keep a clear head and try and answer the unexpected questions. Uh, doctor, I think that's uh, all the questions that uh, they've asked for now. Um, so I guess we'll end it uh, for now. Um, okay. uh, thank you for the wonderful presentation, by the way, Doctor. It was indeed very beneficial. Thank you for the opportunity. Experience and uh, guidance. Um, thank you so much. If anyone has any questions remaining, uh, please feel free to ask them. Um, also, thank you for attending our CGSKSC uh, Saudi Residency interview webinar. Uh, I hope you all greatly benefited from it as much as the team did. Uh, make sure make sure to follow us on our social media. I'll uh, just uh, share the links in the chat. And uh, just to mention something a little bit further, if I may, um, if anybody has any questions that they'd like to ask. Um, uh, after this um, this talk, whatever it may be, feel free to contact me. I believe I was uh, tagged on Twitter here uh, on the post. Feel free to ask me any questions. Feel free to contact me that way, and hopefully I will be able to answer your questions and give further explanation on something that's not clear or you need help with in the future. And again, thank you very much for the opportunity. I hope everybody uh, gained something from this and gained some clarity in the sense of how to approach the interviews. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. Um, thank you. As the doctor said, uh, if you have any further questions, you can ask him uh, any way you want. Excuse me if you allow me. Can I, have, can I ask a question, please? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, what if we had a question like, uh, what if we uh, choose someone else that is less qualified than you? How can we answer this question, please? So the question is, how would you react if we choose someone who's less qualified for you for the job? Basically, for the, okay. For the for problem. The, yeah, for the position. Okay, well, the, the best way on how to answer that, 
which would be an interesting uh, if they're to ask this question would be okay manata i'm not qualified or at the at the same time i'm not particularly made for this program um if that's how you go with if that's how you would go forth with it then i would understand that however at the same time is there something i would towards the end of the towards the end of the the interview process itself is there anything that you are unsure of about myself that you'd like me to clarify I think you would pose a question back. I think this is how you would answer it. And at the same time, uh, pose a question back towards them. So it would give them some dialogue and to se- in the sense of, am I really fit for this program? Do you believe I'm fit for the program? And at the same time, can I clarify a few things to make me fit for the program? Because it does happen. <clears throat> um, uh, based on the algorithm, um, if you know the process of, you would rank the hospitals from one to 10 and they would rank you based on one to 20 or whatever it may be. So if you rank the hos- one hospital 20th, but that 20th hospital or the 10th and that hospital rank you first, depending upon the algorithm, will, would you get it or not? So, and sometimes some people who the, uh, they rank their hospital one, number one and they've ranked that person in particular 50th or whatever it may be, they may, be get, they may get the position based on rankings. So ahyan and it does happen, um, but again, don't take it, don't take it that way. Whatever's what's written for you is written for you, and it's written for the and it's written for a reason. But answering it when it comes down to the interview process itself, I think that would be the best way how to, how to answer that. Um, then the program's not for myself. It will be an unfortunate thing because I am interested in this program. But at the same time, is there something that you are unsure of in this interview in my CV that you'd like me to clarify? That way you can get a back and forth to see if they actually mean that and um, how, and at the same time, you can clarify a few points to gain some points in their book. Well, I hope that answered your question. If anyone has any more questions, please feel free to unmute or send them in the chat. Uh, otherwise, I think we're done with the webinar. Thank you, doctor. Thank you.